here, but... What are the schools like in this district? Yeah, we have twins in the fifth grade. Uh, this neighborhood isn't really for your kids. You know what I mean? If you're black, Latino, Asian American, or Middle Eastern, and a real estate agent or rental agent says anything like this, you know what it means. You're being discriminated against. Housing discrimination because of race, color, or national origin is against the law. If you believe you've experienced housing discrimination, contact HUD. Go to HUD.gov slash fair housing. That's HUD.gov slash fair housing. Fair housing. The law is on your side. A message from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. Do you want to make your community a better place? Then Louisville Metro Police Department is the place for you. LMPD is looking for quality applicants who want to contribute to a better Louisville with lots of opportunities to advance and specialization like helicopter pilot, canine handler, and river patrol. And certifications in areas such as scuba and computer forensics, you'll love the great benefits LMPD has to offer, including tuition reimbursement, take-home cards, and retirement. Go to louisville-police.org and click Become an Officer to learn more. <laughs> American Community, 104.7 FM, AM 1350. W You are listening to The Tipping Point Show with your host, with your host, Mr. Just Ask Joe, John Yeah. Right here on WLOU. Stream it live on Facebook and WLOUonline.com. And now, and now, The Tipping Point Show. Hey, what is up, everybody? Once again, good morning to another episode of the Tipping Point Morning Show. It is your host, your boy, Mr. Just Ass Joe, and my brother from another mother, Brother John Yah. How you doing there, family? I'm great, brother. How about yourself this morning? Oh, man, I am fantastic, and uh, I definitely appreciate uh being able to wake up and 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 do another show man and, and enjoy this uh i love what we do on here because you know what we're doing is not about uh, you know tooting any horns um but not ours but but when it comes to businesses uh especially those that have opened up through this pandemic which is fantastic i think it's awesome that people have taken advantage of uh, the, the, the good things that this pandemic has had to offer, which is lower rent costs when it comes to commercial buildings and a whole lot of other things, man. Um, it, it's, it's awesome how this has kind of been a reset and people are taking advantage of it. And it's a beautiful thing. How's your world going? Yeah, man, it's going great. I, it's, like, like I said, this is, this is one of the best times to be alive. And the reason why during the pandemic, that we have an opportunity to make a stance. And this opportunity is, is, is will go down in history. So regardless of what side you're on, uh, it's like this is going to go down in history. It's not got it was on the right side of the track. It's very interesting. So you got those who are adamant about taking the vaccine, and you got those who are adamant about not taking the vaccine. Those who are adamant will bring all the proof that they that they feel that validates what they feel and what they're thinking. And then on the other side, you have those that can validate and do exactly the same, uh, which is just enough evidence. So it's really like a balanced way. And what we got to understand is we got to understand how to pull together and not get into this, hey, you didn't take the vaccine, you're the problem. Hey, you took the vaccine, you're the problem. And it creates that family separation. So this is a great time to be alive because right now there is this race of survival. There's this race to survive and get through this, right? And so those of us who are on one side, we I am I am proud to be on this show to be to be advocating why we should not take it and what we should be doing, increasing our health, increasing our immune system, increasing our ability to to uh to uh, to, 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 to find another income and not be so enslaved to have to take the shot because of our employer function. And 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 I'm glad for the next show we're gonna have uh and I'm Thank you this show we're going to have today is going to be very exciting. Next week, we're going to talk about homeschooling and what a lot of parents are talking about pulling their kids out of public school. And so this is the opportunity that we need to talk about how to support the local homeschool 
to whether whether your child goes to that school or not, we should support it because maybe one day you may have a child that needs to be pulled out of Jefferson County Public School. Oh yeah, Jefferson County and every other county public schools across uh, the uh, Americas. I mean, to be honest with you, when it comes to homeschooling, man, you know, now now that's a that's a task. But you, you, when you talk about that, you know, it's really not as difficult because we, we have homeschools. There's homeschools all across the U.S. And it's about being able to support it. My, my thought behind it is, you know, what happens as the homeschool begins to grow? Then, you know, at that point, you know, you end up with do you end up with the same problem that you have with public schools, which is not enough teachers and too many students? Or what? You know, that's kind of the, the the thought that comes to mind when I think more and more about homeschooling becoming so popular. But the one thing that I know is from those that I've met uh, homeschool, like Layla, the educator, Hampton, um, they are so much more passionate about what they do. You know, so much more passionate, man, about what they do. And and I see I see I see care and love and joy for what they do. And those are things that I think sometimes are missing. You know, I think sometimes people get caught up and they're, they're you know, so many years in and, and the system beats them down. They can't do this, they can't do that. And the system tends to beat them down. So, uh, you know, those are things that make them in a sense end up kind of, in a sense, almost hating what they do. You know, and you see some teachers and it's like, man, why are you a teacher? Because you, 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 clearly don't like people so <laughs> you know you you probably shouldn't be here because there's people everywhere but uh either way man I'm, I'm one thing that this pandemic has done has awakened people to the understanding that we've got to start doing things different it exposed a lot of things yes a lot of things and uh i want to give a big shout out to again layla the educator hampton um who's watching with us on social media Phyllis, uh, Churchill Myers, thank you, Health Daddy, wow, Brother Frank Stoner, uh, appreciate you, brother, uh, Keisha Williams, Grand Rising, Grand Rising to you and everyone else here, uh, again, Keisha Williams being a supporter of the show financially as well, so we appreciate those that are out there that um, say, yep. hey, you know, Layla, thank you once again, uh, shooting the cash app, hey, that is dollar sign the tipping point show. Uh, you can always hit us up if you want to show us some love. You know, this is how we, you know, y'all's love is how we pay to do what we do every week. All right. And uh, with that in mind, I also want to let everyone know WLOUonline.com. You can follow us there as well. You can uh, uh, roll, we can roll with you on WLOUonline.com. So if you're in, 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 uh, at work or whatever, you want to plug in some headphones, uh, you can just hit us, WLOUonline.com. And as you can see, uh, Facebook Live uh, at The Tipping Point Show or The Tipping Point Radio Show, you find us there. And also on YouTube, we're streaming live as well, right behind me on my computer and every other computer across the land at hashtag The Tipping Point Morning Show. So, uh, you know, you guys can find us there. And we have a fantastic show for you today. I tell you what, man, I'm excited about this show. Uh, you know, I love it whenever we get a chance to have uh, any type of uh, medical professional on the show because it gives us an opportunity to really see things through their eyes um, because they are front lines when it comes to a lot of what's going on. And uh, our special guest that we have on today, uh, Dr. Ben, he is, I mean, he's, when I say front line, I mean, he's out there in the protest holding signs up saying, hey, uh, choice, that should be the, 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 the thing here. We should not be forcing anyone to take this or take that. It should be freedom of choice. You know, and again, I use that analogy. Hey, it's amazing how it's freedom of choice when it comes to, uh, 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 what do you call it? Abortion, Abortion. right? Yeah. Freedom of choice there, you know. Now, I would weigh that very seriously, right? You, you're talking about whether or not or, or the argument of, of when this becomes life, this thing growing inside of a woman becomes life, right? 
and and the debate of whether to nix that, you know, and I'm sorry to to, to say it that way, but a debate to uh, nix that. But here we are with this 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 uh, vaccine. We've dealt with vaccines for many years, and all of a sudden, um, it needs to be mandated, right? That's 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 the argument out here, but. Either way, interesting stuff. We'll talk about that. Um, hey, real quick, man, have you been following up with the, these fights locally in school? Uh, I've been hearing about it. I've seen some things on, on, on uh, Facebook about uh, what was going on here in Louisville with, with a teacher uh, uh, calling out some names or using racial slurs. Yeah, stars. you know, I mean, and, and, and it's, it's, you know, we're hitting national news once again, you know, um here in in louisville kentucky i think i think uh you know it's, it's either first uh 48 and then um <laughs> uh which in the greatest news to be hitting and 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 that was you know uh, highlighting beach of terrace uh but then we have um um brianna taylor situation right you know um and of course we've hit national news with plenty of amazing things uh, we can talk about football and everything else, right? Um, but but you know, as far as this type of stuff, Breonna Taylor, and then uh, you know, yet again, David McAtee. That was you know, New York Times as well. And once again, New York Times picked up this story um, about this student. And it's interesting. It's um, I, I believe the the brother's name. I'm trying to remember it. Um, if anybody ends up calling in. And telling us that uh, young man's name uh, that was uh, uh, involved in this, but it, it had something to do with him wearing his bandana that he wears for, I guess, as mask as a mask as well. And uh, he got into some type of altercation with the teacher over that, and the teacher said something to the effect of, "You'll just end up as another black kid, you know, laying in the street or something like that." Now, apparently this kid may have a, a, a you know, somewhat of a, a rough background. Um, you know, last year he was uh, shot in the streets as well. So, you know, but but we're we're jumping up, right? Jumping up real quick and labeling him as the face of uh, mental health in the community or the face of PTSD and saying that his PTSD was triggered. But when I try to ask any questions about how it went from this conversation about his bandana with the teacher to an actual physical altercation, no one can, can get me from point A to point Z. So that's the part that I, I find tough because I don't like jumping out there and yelling, screaming, shouting, protesting about something that I don't have all the facts about. You know, but but it seems that sometimes we get so passionate and that's what we end up doing is we end up running out there and we end up throwing our, our, our fist up. And and, you know, sometimes we end up looking uh, like we got egg on our face. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things I see here is that what is that what is on the news most will get most attention and will draw your energy. OK, so so again, example, uh, every time something comes up like this, we got to have something to trigger uh, our people, black people, African-Americans to some type of trigger that way it, it, it moves our attention. While right now they're still passing laws and they are doing things. And, and here, we, what are we doing? In Australia, they, they already did a lockdown. They're already locking people up right now in Australia. Right. I was on the uh, clubhouse talking to a gentleman from Australia and how only one person can come out the house. And if anyone has COVID and they give COVID to someone, guess what? That person can be sued. And if, and if you give a company COVID and the company has to shut down, guess what? You got to pay for that company to shut down. So we're not paying attention. If what are we over here doing? Not if, if we're not over here being distracted with some of the news media, we over here uh, climbing crates. Uh, getting crates behind stores and climbing <laughs> oh, the, crates and see oh, the, new, crate the, the, the new crate yeah, town. Let me tell you something. Yeah, the new, let, me, let me tell you something. Black people, you have a problem in loving seeing black people fall. 
And this is where we are. And that's the only thing that's going to happen is that we are celebrating our demise by, by wishing somebody falls off a crate. And it's, it's interesting how we celebrate it by looking at it, laughing at it, and posting it, repeatedly posting it, to where we love seeing ourselves fall. I don't see no other race doing it. I don't see no Japanese. I don't see no Arabs doing it. What I'm saying is that there's a serious problem with us that we want to laugh at one of our own falling. This is where we are in this society. While we sucking and jiving, these people are trying to pass some laws to control you. And we don't get that point, right? Because we're easily distracted. Man. Easily. Man, that's 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 truth, man. That that is some truth. And um it's interesting here. And you know we'll, we can uh continue the convo as uh we wait on our guests to call in. Um but you know it it's interesting how that works. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's some interesting stuff there because, you know, if we, you're right, we're easily, easily distracted. Um, just the same. So it's, it's interesting how that works. Um, let's see, Jerry, do we have our uh, guests calling in on the line? Jerry? Yes, sir. Yes, you do, sir. She's on now. All right, fantastic. All right, fantastic. Well, fantastic. I want well, to uh, I want welcome to, uh, to the show uh, a, a another fighter out here um, fighting for civil liberties, just the same, trying not to allow them to control us as they're trying to do. Uh, Dr. Ben or Dr. Benjamin, uh, welcome to the Tipping Point Morning Show. How you doing there, sir? I'm doing an excellent show. Thanks for having me on. All right, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna bring you on the video as well, as well and I uh, will well. add you to the stream and mute you there. All good. All right, so how's uh how's everything going? Now you're over in Arizona, correct? That's right. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now, uh, Doctor Ben, uh, this is my co-host, brother John Yah, and um, how you doing? You guys both. Hey, good morning, John. You guys both are, are, are big health advocates. Um, so, Dr. Ben, tell us a little bit about uh, your credentials, what you do. I see a lot of talk about autoimmune disease and things of that nature. Maybe give us a quick little synopsis of your story and uh, uh, just let people know who you are. Sure, I'll, I'll give you the, the shortest version that I can because I do like to ramble. But um, basically... Uh, first part of my career, I wasn't a doctor. I was actually an engineer working in the microchip industry. Uh, I didn't know anything about health, anything about vaccines, anything about nutrition, anything about drugs, any of that. And I got really sick in my late 20s out of nowhere. And um, chronic fatigue, chronic pain, chronic digestive issues, chronic eczema, brain fog, really bad. And um, doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with me, couldn't help me. And uh, I kind of went through the whole medical ringer, got told, like, we don't know what's wrong with you, your labs were fine, let's put you on this drug, put you on that drug, not getting any better, getting worse. And eventually, I just had to go, okay, you know, this is not working for me. Like, I really thought, I had my faith in the medical system, that, like a lot of people do, um, to save me, and it didn't. And so I had to drop out, fire all my doctors, and just start researching on my own, and, you know, reading articles and reading books, watching documentaries, you know, uh, things like that. And basically came to the conclusion that if I changed my diet and my lifestyle, maybe some of these problems would go away. And I didn't want to do it at first because I didn't want to, didn't want to make changes. But uh, I got painted into a corner where my health was so bad, I was going to, like, lose my job. I was going to, I couldn't really do anything. Couldn't work, couldn't really go out and be social. And so I did, found out, you know, within... You know, two months of making the right changes, all symptoms completely gone. So I'm like a completely new person. And so after about a year of doing that, of just like living a super healthy lifestyle and eat tons of fruits and vegetables and um, being a really evangelical guy about health because I wanted everybody to know how much better I felt. Nobody wanted to listen to me. So, well, you know, if I go become a doctor, maybe they'll listen to me. <laughs> and also, I just wanted to help people who've been through the same thing because I knew that there's a lot of people who just get chewed up and spit out by the system, you know, don't get any better. They put their faith in it and it doesn't work for them. Mm. So I wanted to be the guy that helped them, that the guy that I couldn't find, you know, 11 years ago. 
And so um, was going to be a naturopathic doctor. They didn't want to bother with drugs. They knew that was a dead end. Um, but then it ended up that um, like the state I wanted to practice in time didn't allow that. So I was going to go be a chiropractor and practice naturopathy de facto. Um, and now I'm now I'm basically uh, working as a chiropractor. So I do the usual spine stuff and I do nutrition, diet, lifestyle with people and help people with autoimmune disease, um, you know, reverse it naturally without drugs. And so that's what I'm super passionate about. So autoimmune diseases include stuff like rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, thyroid, Hashimoto, um, Crohn's disease, colitis. There's a long list of them. But any diseases with the immune system attacking the body, that's the kind of thing we can reverse the diet and lifestyle. And that's what I love to help people with. And so the way I got into the medical freedom fight was I was researching these autoimmune diseases. Why does the immune system attack the body? Well, <laughs> didn't make any sense, right? And all the medical literature said, for most of it, said, we don't know. But you dig deep enough, you start finding cases showing up in certain uh, studies. What study? Vaccination safety study. Mm. still vaccine. Within six months of getting all three shots, 2.3% of women got an autoimmune disease. That became a smoking gun. And I realized that there was a, if there wasn't a causal relationship, there was damn well sure at least a correlation. And uh, the more I dug into it and actually read the data on vaccines, it was clear that there, there was a connection between vaccination and autoimmune disease. And so that's when I got involved in, um, in advocating for vaccine choice and preserving um, vaccine choice, preserving uh, exemptions for people uh, politically. And so when this whole COVID thing came down the pipe, I knew 2020 was just a giant vaccine commercial. That's all it was. It was just a giant publicity stunt. Um, so I knew this was coming. Here we are. We're fighting. And that's, I guess that brings you to the present day. Wow. So let, let me... that's, that's amazing, man. You, you, you've been through a lot. And uh, John, I'm going to let you jump in here. Um, you know, I went through the same thing with an autoimmune disease myself uh, with Crohn's disease. And I, I just happened to start as a sales demonstrator for a company called Vitamix Corporation. And um, as I started showcasing that, that, that whole foods juicing blender and drinking this stuff as well, the first thing I noticed is that if I drank a big glass of this 100% bioavailable, nutritious uh, 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 liquid where the only sweetener I used was a dab of honey or some B vitamins and live digestive enzymes that it would coat the inside of my intestinal tract and I could literally eat whatever I want, whereas before I couldn't. And then I started just, you know, as you start drinking more and more raw fruits and vegetables, well, guess what? Your palate changes and you, you start to consume more. So uh, you know, it, it, it changed my life. Absolutely. No colonoscopy bag whatsoever. No surgeries, none of that stuff. So that's awesome. Go ahead, John. Uh, let me ask you a question. Did you, are you leaking, uh, are you leaking autoimmune disease somehow to, to the, to the vaccines that are out there? Is that what you're saying? That somehow the rise for autoimmune disease is connected to vaccines? Um, you know, it's not the only cause. I think it's multifactorial. Um, but uh, but I think that uh, it definitely it contributes. If you think about what a vaccination is, it's a drug that's designed to alter your immune system, right? For the better. Like, they're trying to alter it for the better, so you're immune to whatever disease they're shooting you up with. Um, but we also know that drugs have these things called side effects. They all do, right? They don't do just what they're trying to do. They do other stuff. You can't do one thing in the human body, like. You know, if you, um, you know, take, give someone uh, a drug that, um, you know, like a blood center, an anticoagulant um, for their blood pressure, um, well, basically now that their blood's not going to clot on the inside so that they don't get plaques in their arteries, but guess what? Their blood's also not going to clot on the outside if they get a cut or have a wound or something like that. It's not going to heal. So there's all side effects. You, you do can't do one thing to the body like there's there's downstream effects so when you try to modulate 
the immune system and alter it in some way, you're not just altering in the way you think you're altering it. You're altering there are unforeseen consequences. And it appears, based on the preponderance of evidence, that one of those um, side effects is autoimmunity. So, so let me ask you a question. So do your clients... If they come to you with, let's say a client comes to you, do you do, do your clients come to you that have um, have the symptoms of of covert? And if they so, what do you treat them with, or what do you advise them? Uh, I don't treat people with acute COVID. I don't do that. Um, so there's there's uh, there's other. I treat chronic disease, not acute disease. So um, here's my perspective. Okay. Um, since doing this diet and lifestyle that I do now, high raw, plant-based, lots of green smoothies, using the Vitamix every day, I don't get sick. Like, I don't know how to describe it. I've been sick maybe three times in the past 10 years, and it lasted a day or two. So I'm not really personally worried about getting COVID. Like, if I get it, it'll be about as bad as tripping off a curve. I'll be okay, right? So I'm much more about live a healthy diet and lifestyle, and you know, and, and no, you know, there's people that you know essentially bullshit themselves as thinking that they do, they don't really. But if you really actually live, you know, a, a very healthy lifestyle, getting the flu or getting COVID is like not a not a thing you're going to worry about. Like even if, even if you do get it, it's going to be pretty mild. So that's where I start. But if you haven't been living a healthy lifestyle and you've been drinking and eating junk food. Um, well, guess what? It's going to kick you a lot harder, and then you may need to look at therapy. Um, but that's not something I don't advise people on taking drugs. So I'm not going to come on here and say, you know, take this drug or that, or that drug or this take that. I, I don't, I don't play in that that pool. Um, so I, I, I hate to dodge the question, but I, like, yeah, I don't, I don't treat those patients. So in, in your in your circle, in your circle of people, whether they're your patients or other your colleagues, uh, what are they saying? What are they saying? What are y'all saying about the vaccines, the dangers, the pros, the cons? What is out there in the discussion in your circle? Well, I'm definitely seeing the injured people. That's for sure. Uh, they're coming into my office. Okay, they've got things like multiple sclerosis, Hashimoto's. They've got autoimmune disease, chronic fatigue, things that have just come out of nowhere, like very severe chronic diseases that happen within days of getting the first or second dose of, you know, the science juice. Um, so definitely, definitely uh, seeing that for sure. Um, you know, I, I, I do have, like, naturopathic colleagues that are treating um, acute COVID with um, things as simple as IV vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D things, not even going the... Uh, the HDQ or ivermectin route. Like, if they, they want to treat it as conservatively as they can. Um, because, you know, like even these drugs that, you know, in the alternative space are getting touted, they well, they still have side effects, they still have risks, and they're very low. Um, but, uh, but you know, treating it as conservatively as they can. I had a patient of mine who got COVID who I didn't treat, but she went and saw another practitioner and got, uh, you know, she's been sick for like nine days, couldn't get out of bed, no symptoms other than fatigue, body ache, and a fever, no respiratory symptoms, tested positive multiple times. Um, people came to her house in hazmat suits, gave her I, uh, vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, she was up and walking around later that day. So that's the kind of stuff I'm seeing if that answers that question. Yes. Yeah. So, so, Doc, did you get your uh, half a watermelon in today for breakfast yet? <laughs> uh, not yet. It's only six a.m. down here, so I, I probably won't eat breakfast till later. But yeah, I've been smashing the watermelon for breakfast somewhere for sure. I noticed that we we talk a lot about uh, uh, you know the fruits and veggies, and and definitely a lot about uh, watermelon even in just uh, allowing more uh, oxygen to flow through the bloodstream. So, but, you know, in, in this um, arena of the, the, the health and wellness uh, or the medical fight out here, you know, I see some of the stuff that, um, you know, you've been dealing with and, and some of the posts that you've been making. Uh, explain to people what is VAERS, uh, the VAERS data. What is that? 
and 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 why is that uh, a conversation piece? Oh, sure, great question. So the VAR stands for the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. So theoretically, if someone gets a vaccine and be thereafter, you know, it could, it could be days, it could be weeks, it could be months, experiences what they believe to be an adverse event and a side effect, and that could be something as simple as like, um, you know, getting like a rash on their arm or be something complex, you know, developing like crippling Guillain-Barre syndrome or anything in between, they are supposed to tell their doctor about it, and their doctor is supposed to file a report to it um, so that a record is kept, um, that we know that an adverse event happened. Here's the thing. A lot of stuff doesn't get reported because, number one, the patient doesn't realize there may be a connection. Number two, the patient may go to their doctor and say, hey, this funny thing happened after I got the shot. And the doctor says, oh, no, there's no link. It's not a correlation. It's not because of that. It's all in your head. Okay, or the doctor may not know about bears, which, you know, a couple of years ago, before this whole COVID thing, most didn't know that it exists, or they would try to report it to the manufacturer. Um, so a lot of these things aren't getting reported. And we have something, uh, we have a couple of laws in the United States that people should be aware of, okay? Number one is the 1986 Childhood Vaccine Injury Law, and the other one is the, the PREP Act. Both of these laws make it such that if you have an adverse event from a vaccine, if you have an injury, a suspected injury, you can't sue the manufacturer. You can't sue Pfizer. You can't sue Moderna. You can't sue Merck. You can't sue GlaxoSmithKline um, or any of these guys that make these drugs. You can't sue them. They're literally not liable. There's no other product in the United States that has indemnity from liability other than nuclear waste. If you're harmed by nuclear waste, sorry, you can't you can't uh, do the the, um, the manufacturer. But pretty much any other product, if it harms you, you can sue them. Well, in the United States, you have to make a claim with the government. The government pays the money. You and I, the taxpayer, pays the cost if someone's injured by a vaccine and the manufacturer just goes, you keep sued. Um, so, that the adverse events are supposed to be reported by the system, to the system, but it doesn't always happen. A uh, Harvard study showed that less than 1% of it, and this Harvard study pre-COVID showed that less than 1% of adverse events were actually reported. Okay. So now, with, with uh, these COVID shots, and I really don't like to call them vaccines, Okay, maybe you could say that of the Johnson & Johnson, but the Moderna and the Pfizer are, are essentially gene therapy. They don't keep the legal definition of a vaccine. Um, the, the adverse events, the reports, the bears are just blowing it up. They're, like, behind on logging them, right? They're deleting random ones out of nowhere. The system's very, very shaky. It's not robust. It's not good at, at tracking things. Um, it's very easy to um, report things wrong get to get um, bad data in there um, uh, and so it's not it doesn't really track what's going on it kind of makes it a mess so that they go oh yeah you know there's like 12,000 deaths reported but a lot of that data is bad and a lot of those people are lying and a lot of that is that people don't understand that it wasn't the vaccine even though they died the day after um, so uh, so we know that it, it exists but it's really bad at tracking um, so that's what we've got. And so that's why we've kind of got a mess. So at least all these people can report deaths and adverse injuries and paralysis and serious chronic conditions that happen. And they can just gloss it off and say, oh, you know, that data and that fair thing is unreliable. You can't listen to it. Like, they really haven't been deaths. That's just hysterical anti-vaxxers who report that stuff. And it's like, really? Someone goes and gets the vaccine and dies? You think they got it voluntarily? As a, is it? anti-vaxxers didn't want to get vaccinated and died and then their family member reported it, like, give me a break. Um, so, that, that's the fair system, etc. 
essentially. But you can go on, um, I think it's bears.hhs.gov, and you can you can look at it. It's public domain. You can pull up a spreadsheet and see, you know, there's thousands of adverse events on there, and you can look through them. It's publicly available. It's hard to find. You really got to dig to get to it, but it's there. Yeah, so now, now, now that's a, that, that, that's interesting. Go ahead, John. There, there's a lot of medical doctors who are speaking out against it. Uh, and I'm running into a lot of doctors on, on Clubhouse, and I'm seeing certain doctors put out videos. John, I can't hear you. Speak. Uh, there you go. Okay. Uh, doctors that are uh, against the vaccine uh, and it's giving out, putting out videos that are being taken down. Uh, these are medical doctors. And so, um, and then I'm, I'm running into a lot of doctors on Clubhouse that are advising people not to take the vaccine. Why do you think that it is so hard um, for just a medical doctor to get out there for people to listen? Because right now people are listening and they would only, you, you, you sometimes have to have a white coat doctor for people to really get in other words even if a doctor comes on and it's not on the news a lot of people won't follow it because even though they hear it from a medical doctor the news are still pushing the fear of needing to take the vaccine why do you think that is a lot of doctors are being kicked out of the system sure that's a great question um and it, it basically comes down to money and power so the pharmaceutical industry is, is the most powerful industry on the planet. They are the drug cartels. Okay? They, they are the drug cartels. The pharmaceutical industry is really kind of a nice name to them. Um, they yield, they have a lot of money, and with that money, they yield a lot of power. And so just to give you an idea, um, they have the biggest lobby um, uh, in terms of like how much money they spend lobbying the federal government and the state government, okay? Um, so uh, they have tremendous power over politicians, okay? Because they can, they, they basically own them. They have three times the lobbying power of oil and gas. So we know that oil and gas is a powerful lobby, okay? On television, television, how, how do they make money? How, does, how do the news stations make money? Good question. If you look at the commercials, they mostly are pharmaceutical commercials. <laughs> there you go. Yep. So they make commercials. advertisers run ads on them. If you turn on the TV, you see an ad for Pizza Hut, and then the next thing you see is an ad for heartburn medication. Okay. Problem solution. All right. Hey. It's all junk food and pharmaceutical. Okay. So, pharmaceuticals in non-election years, like this year but not last year, um, contribute over, it's either over 50% or 60% of the advertising dollars to, to the mainstream news show, okay? So, most of the revenue that they make is from running pharmaceutical ads. So, if they didn't run pharmaceutical ads, they'd be broke. They'd be out of business, okay? So, essentially the pharmaceutical industry de facto controls what's on the news. Because if the news story wants to run, news wants to run a story about someone dying or having an adverse event or a vaccine, the industry goes, no, 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 you don't run that. You don't get to run that. Uh-uh, you run that. We pull our ads. It's done. It's done in this town. Um, and so they wield a lot of power over the news just by default. Um, it's uh, so, if there's some doctor that wants to come on and says, hey guys, like ivermectin, or hey guys, hydroxychloroquine, or hey guys, maybe the vaccine's a bad idea, they're never getting on the mainstream news. Ever. Because the advertisers call the shot. And the advertisers say, no, you're not running that store. You're not making us look bad. You don't get any more money. Um, so the mainstream news has essentially become the stock puppet of uh, the industry. Just as the FDA and the CDC have become the stock puppet of the industry. So it looks like they're reporting fair and balanced and unbiased news. Well, no, they're just, they're just beholden to their sponsors. And if their sponsors want you to think there's some disease out there, be scared of so they can sell you more drugs, oh, man, they're going to do a lot of that. 
Um, and, uh, you know, and so the same thing happens in the government. We have the FDA and the CDC that pretend to be government agencies, but really they just have a lot of ex-pharma employees or, or government employees who've been promised pharma positions when they leave, and so they do the, the bidding of the industry. So we have this illusion that there's an unbiased media. We have this illusion that there's these um, neutral government regulators, but really they're all controlled by the industry, okay? Um, so whenever there's a story that they don't like, it just gets buried. And so, um, you know, the same thing happens with these internet companies. Um, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, his wife, is a pediatrician. She administers vaccines for a living, and she still works. But she did at one point. Um, so they are tied to drug manufacturers. So if you say something that they don't like about drug companies on Facebook, it's getting censored, it's getting buried, you're getting kicked off, you're getting thrown in Facebook jail. Hope you get some good prison tattoos while you're in jail, okay? So this stuff gets buried just because the industry has so much financial influence on the media, on the social media companies, on the FDA, the CDC, the regulators. So that's why you're not hearing about it. Um, because there's just too much industry influence to suppress the information. Amazing, amazing stuff. You know, what, what, what bugs me about it is that these people who they declare as uh, conspiracy theorists and things of that nature, they were normal practicing physicians the day before. And all of a sudden, they decide to speak up, stand up, speak up, speak out, and next thing you know, everyone's like, oh, that person's not credible. Why? Because someone told you, you know, in the media that that person was incredible. So it, it's just, it, yeah. it, 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 there's, a, there's a lack of common sense in our country these days. You know, I always tell people this all the time, you know, Google the death of common sense, scroll down a bit. It's an, it's an obituary out there. It's a great read, fun read. But uh, it, it talks about the death of common sense, and it goes through different historical timelines of things that changed and happened in our society that uh, killed off common sense. But, but what I've found is that rolling with the idea of common sense, well, that's what helped me get over COVID. You know, I, I looked at common sense. I, I said, hey, you know, I've, you know, this is inflammation of mucus in the airways. I need to rid the body of mucus. And, and that's what I did, and five days later, you know, I was one and done, you know, it was probably four days. I took an extra day, but, you know, one and done myself. And, and you know, with that in mind, it, it, if this was about health, why do you, why, are, why aren't we talking raw fruits, vegetables, herbs, you know, things of that nature, better eating habits? I mean, I saw Black Lives Matter uh, giving out cases of milk in, 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 Black neighborhoods last year. What do we know about milk? It thickens mucus in the body. So ultimately, you're just <laughs> perpetuating the problem by doing that. So it's just amazing how common sense is just totally out the window, and 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 people people just you know they 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 don't care. And I've noticed something, Doc. You know your uh your following is is growing. I mean, I I saw just a week ago. Um, in just the last week, you've got like 4,000 new followers on uh, 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 Instagram there. So, you know, what do you think it is that people are resonating uh, with the most as you as you talk your talk? Um, I think the resonating most is that it's all charade. It's all a game. Like, it's all it's all a dog and pony show. The FDA, CDC, the media... Um, they come out and they say these things with this, like, presumptive authority, listen to us, we're the real doctors, we're the scientists, we're the good guys, and then they just straight up lie, and and the people with the common sense can see through it. They can see that the emperor has no clothes, and so I call it out very plainly. I'm like, you know, I don't, you know, rush to any kind of conspiracy. I'm like, this is what's going on, right? Like, I said something in the effect of, like, the FDA has approved one of the, the shots, and the clinical trial is not even complete. So obviously the FDA is just doing the, the bidding of the industry. It you can't see it now, and then it's as obvious as it gets, and people are like, yeah, that post got a lot of traction. Yep. Um, so I just, I just explain things in terms of common sense, 
blatantly exposing the lies, the inconsistencies, the double speak, and people go, yeah, that, that resonates with me. That's totally true. And, um, and I just, I just explain things in common sense terms. I'm not hysterical. I'm just trying to be Captain Obvious, essentially. And I think that's what people, people resonate with. Like you said, common sense. CFS, common F in the sense. <laughs> let, let me ask you this. This is very interesting. Uh, I, you know, I, of course, I shop at Whole Foods and, and, and out into areas where it's not in the lower income area. And I noticed, I was just talking to a couple of people about this yesterday, how I'm noticing people, uh, mostly uh, uh, Caucasian people, not wearing masks. And it feels so comfortable, you know, and they're smiling at you. They see you not wearing a mask, they smile at you, kind of nod their head. Uh, now, now, on the on the racial line, I know that Joe and I was on the show uh, dealing with COVID and the vaccines where this show that we was on or that we was invited on the Zoom where they were trying to set up vaccine uh, stations in the black neighborhood. And we, and we talked about that it is more Caucasian people, more white people that are not taking the vaccine than black people. What are you seeing, those who you are following you and listening to you? Could you hear me? Uh, I heard it was the opposite. I heard that um, black people were more vaccine hesitant than white people. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I, you know, when you, when, you I, say, I when you say that, Doc, what, what interests me about that is because to me, um, and John, you know, you, you probably might agree, but it seems to be that is the media ploy right there. Exactly. Because they're, they're, because now you're pitting people against each other and you're saying, hey, you got to hurry up and get it um, because, you know, we, we are more susceptible. Um, you know, well, you know, don't take that case of uh, milk from Black Lives Matter when they pass it out and, you know, you have less problems. Um, but, but, you know, ultimately... I think that that's the media ploy right there is here. These people aren't taking it um, and they know how emotional and passionate um, these people over here are. So now these people are pointing at each other and, and, and getting uh, tr triggered by this while over here on the other side, you know, people are, are, are really, I mean, I, I saw something recently, a public school hearing and, you know, a couple people got escorted out because they would not wear mask yeah and and some people on on the on the one side of the fence said you know hey how dare he not wear a mask and i was up there like hey man you know shout out to him you know i said i probably would have wore the mask because i would have been there for the public school meeting um but uh, I'm, I'm i'm not mad at him for standing up and standing out um against that because again there there, there shouldn't be a force my thing is if you got the vaccine what were we saying before when people got the vaccine, hey, what you scared of now? You got you got the force field. You got the superhero force field magic shot. So you should be good. You shouldn't worry about me at all. But and and then again, we go back to common sense, and all of a sudden we're seeing a spike, right? And now they're talking about across the country, shutting things down and creating situations where only the vaccinated people can do and be right because we've got a spike well common sense tells me what have we done over the last you know few months oh oh there was the super vaccine thing right and people started getting all the shots and then all of a sudden we're spiking and now all of a sudden we want to mask it and then all of a sudden there's a third shot I mean, come on, people. If common sense does not kick in at this point, then I just don't know how we can help the the people nonetheless. So I guess it's just a matter of continuing to fight the good fight. That's the only thing left to do. It, am I right <laughs> or am I wrong? <laughs> yeah, I, I think fear plays a big role. The media can make people afraid. And then common sense goes out the window, and they go, "Oh, I gotta get a third shot, and a third mask, and I gotta stay inside and close out my business." And like, whatever you say, I'm afraid, right? But like, it all makes no sense to you and I because we're not afraid. We're not. We haven't bought into the mind control, um, and so it's, it's clearly like patent stupidity. Um, but if you're really afraid, you, you ability to rationally think and, and use common sense is negated. 
And so, so we got to just keep, you know, spin the truth here. Um, you know, these people are under this spell of fear that if they weren't, they would see through like, oh, this is absurd. Like, why did I do any of this? Um, more and more people are waking up every day. That's the good. So that's we good. Got to keep doing. What Absolutely, absolutely. Real quick, I uh, I definitely want to make sure that I give a shout out to our uh, sponsors. First up, a BB to me trading company, the home of Saya Baba and Soap Sticks products. They are in over 400 locations at a store near you. You can also find them at sayababa.com. Again, that's S Y A B A B A dot com. That's a BB to me trading company. Sayababa.com, owned by yours truly, Brother John Yah. Health Daddy Wow. Again, www.healthdaddywow.net. Folks, is home of the 100% plant based vitamins, herbs, cleanses, and teas. We are here to help you live longer, feel better, and look great. Hey, locally, they are at 1806 Ralph Avenue, Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., Sunday, 12 noon to 5 p.m. Folks, again, you can order it across the world at healthdaddywow.net. And that's, again, Frank Stoner. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, we love the support. Um, and shout out to uh, Kari Muhammad, once again, always supporting us uh, all the time. Uh, that, that is a fantastic graphic artist that does stuff for a lot of companies um, across the country. Um, so, you know, if you're ever in need, hit up Kari Muhammad. He's got uh, uh, some of the best graphic design work out there. Um, just the same, folks, you know, th this, this right here, I just want to say um, we, you know, again, pro-choice. That's, that's where, we, where we drop the ball at, pro-choice. Um, it's, this should be a situation to where no one should be forcing me. And, and, and again, this conversation, this, this goes into even when it comes to um, your home. There are homes divided. I'm going through it right now, you know, uh, just, just, to, just to keep it all the way real. Uh, you know, kid getting a shot, separate households, things of that nature. Folks, you know, everyone should just have a choice to do what we've been doing for a zillion years and, and make the decision ourselves. But I'm going to tell you right now, your best decision is focusing on your health so that you don't have to worry. Uh, John, you want to say something to that? Yeah, that's very important. And uh, thanks for about the health. But I also want to talk about individuals who own businesses. If you're a business owner here in Louisville and you want a spot here to 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 talk about your business, the opportunity to help you grow, come on, give us a call. And we're more than glad to have you on the show to discuss your business. Uh, and so because we always try to either uh, advance someone's business and help someone out and try to improve their health and their wealth. Right. So uh, look us up and definitely uh, 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 reach out to us about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, again, folks, and that can be businesses across the world. Um, you know, we even had some people from uh, out the country reach out to us uh, to highlight their business. Um, but we're getting more of that. And, and what I'm seeing is, again, people take advantage of the opportunity that this pandemic brings. Listen, depending upon how you vibrate in high, low frequency, folks, you're going to see this thing different. You know, you're going to look at this as an opportunity and, and, and see what's going on there. Uh, you're going to look at this as a, uh, a, a, a downing situation that uh, has a foot on your neck. It just depends on how you vibrate out there, what frequency you're putting out, the energy that, uh, you know, revolves around you and your circle. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, this is uh, there's a lot of opportunity um, in business when it comes to this. But when it comes to your health, folks, you know, it, I, I can't say it enough. Um, either you can focus on your health now while you have a choice and, and, and negate medicines and medications down the road, or you can wait until you don't have a choice and then you're forced because you ended up with some ailment that uh, you didn't focus on. Um, Doc. Would you please go ahead and give us some info on how people can reach out to you, uh, contact you? We already have uh, people asking how to uh, reach out to you. So uh, just go ahead and uh, give us some information on how to 
to, to, to follow you or what your social media page is, all that good stuff. Sure. So it's my name on all the platforms. Um, the one I'm most active on is Instagram. I'm also shadow banned on Instagram, so you have to type in my name exactly. But uh, it's Dr. Benjamin Benua, so Dr. Benjamin, and then last name is spelled B-E-N, like my first name, U-L-I-S. So if you look that up on, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, I'm on there. Uh, Dr. Benjamin com is my website. Um, any of those um, are good. So I would say probably my website and my Instagram are the ones I'm most active on. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, you know, it, it's amazing when you really think about this whole thing. Um, it, it, it almost, what's interesting is the movies, right? Movies that we've watched growing up, it's almost like we're playing out a movie right now. And, and it makes you wonder what information did directors and writers know when they were making these movies, because who were they talking to? Who were they consulting? Because some of this stuff is playing out just as we've seen in the in the movies, and and it's almost like we're heading there. We're heading to uh, the 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 vaccinated versus the non-vaccinated. We're heading to a society where these people who got the shot um, are able to do this, that, and the other. Um, where uh, if you didn't get the shot, you're not able to. There's already people uh, who've gotten arrested in other uh for trying to leave the country um with fake vaccine cards and things of that nature um that's already going on and uh you know you're talking about the ability to sue someone like you were saying earlier john um if in fact they gave you COVID. now i mean I've, I've never heard of anybody suing anybody for giving them the flu or uh for for giving them, i mean and and how can you even officially pinpoint it because if we go by CDC guidelines and things of that nature, well, dude, it's like, you know, you got 14 days and you know, all, you know, all these different things going on. You, you don't know where you got it from for reals, but it, it's just well, amazing. Basically, the time. Well, what basically, yeah, the, the, what's happening in Australia is crazy. And so it, it makes you glad you're living right here in America where you have an opportunity to fight back and resist. Uh, and, and it's time. It's, it's time to show resistance. It's time to actually reject what they're telling where are you in another country. It's a different ball game. Like if you in China, it's a different ball game. They've are, China already have a system set up where if you say something against the government or you do something out of line, they have just like what we have over here, the credit system, where your credit bad, you can't borrow money. Well, they got a system over there that if you're Blackstone, you can't even get on the bus and travel to another property. So you can't, you can't travel, you can't get on a plane, you can ride a bike and walk. And that's what it's supposed to get. Kids in good schools, nothing like that. Nothing, right? So, so that's what people are pushed against. People are pushed against their fear. They're afraid to lose their job. You're afraid to lose that car note. You're afraid to lose that house note. And so people will roll up their sleeves and, and take that shot. All right. Now, real quick, folks, um, this is once again been another episode of the Tipping Point Morning Show. You know we continue it right here on Facebook Live at the Tipping Point Show or Tipping Point Radio Show. You can check us out there, but we will see you Radio Land next week right here on WLOUonline.com or WLOU 104.7 FM. Peace, people. Peace. All right. All right, so everybody can unmute here. And let's see here, unmute. Um, John, unmute. I'm going to back out, come back in, get the sound right. All right. Sounding good? Yeah, good. Yep. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Um, yes, so we're off the call, uh, Dr. Ben. And um, the radio part is just an hour. And, um, you know, we, we might chat it up a little bit longer. And here we don't have to worry about the, uh, what is it, the FTC. So um, we can say and speak as we want, how we want, uh, a little bit better here. Um, but real quick, 
before we started up. You are listening to The Tipping Point Show with your host, with your host, Mr. Just Ask Joe, John Yeah. Right here on WLOU. Stream it live on Facebook and WLOUonline.com. And now, and now, The Tipping Point Show. All right, all right. A little bit of branding there. Um, once again, folks, just introducing uh, Dr. Ben here, who is someone that is 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 out here fighting uh, for civil liberties in the medical community, uh, especially. Um, I noticed that protest. I believe it was you guys did in Scottsdale. Um, I saw you out there with the uh, with your sign and everything. Um, Tell us a little bit about that and what, what that was about, Doc. Sure. So um, we've had several protests at hospitals in um, the Phoenix, Scottsdale, greater area. And basically what's going on right now is that the hospitals are trying to mandate the shots for the workers there. And the nurses <laughs> don't want to take it because they are there. And they see the people come in with the adverse events and they know um, that there's risks involved and they don't want to do it. But they're being told, if you don't do it, we're, you can't work here anymore. And so this is a form of coercion, right? Because if this thing were safe and amazing, as they say it is, then everybody would just be lining up to get it. But they're not. Um, and so we were protesting in support of the um of the nurses and the other hospital workers i'm sure there's doctors that also don't want to get it um in order that for them to keep their jobs um because we know that if they mandate it for um the employees well pretty soon it's going to be they won't even admit you into the hospital unless you've had it and we want to preserve their jobs it's not someone um you know it, it is unjust for someone to demand you take a product which may very well harm you in order just to keep your job. Um, so we we're protesting that because we know that it's like once they come after the nurses, then they're going to come after, you know, the airline workers or they're going to come after the truck drivers or they're going to come after people like me and say, I can't renew my license. I'm a danger to my patients unless I've shot up the science juice. Mm. So, mm. so we were fighting that. And, and, and so what they're, what's happening now OK, this is my understanding based on talking to nurses and people who work in critical care is that a lot of nurses are calling out. They're fighting it. They're not coming into work and they're trying to show their employer like, look, if you fire us, you're a hose. This hospital can't run at full capacity. People are going to die. And so the media is running a story like, oh, the hospitals are full. The hospitals are packed. All these unvaccinated people are filling up the hospitals. And, you know, um, like we're all going to die. Well, no, what's happening is that uh, medical professionals like nurses are not working because they're being forced to get the jab. And so hospital capacity is actually going down. And, and so they can't admit as many people as they'd like. And now they make this scarcity situation, which is not scarcity of space in the hospital. It's scarcity of people who are willing to work there. Hmm. Um, so we are essentially trying to, to help preserve their rights and basically tell these major hospitals in the area, Banner, Honor, Phoenix Children's, like, like you ain't shooting us up with dope. It ain't happening. Um, so, so that's what we're about. We know that if we resist, um, that, that you know, we have, we have power in numbers, okay? Right. You look at something like the airline industry. United Airlines came out and said, all United Airlines employees got to get the jab by like October or something. I can't remember. And people flipped out. They flipped out at United. They flipped out at Delta and at American. And well, no, maybe, maybe I can't remember it was either United or Delta. One of the airlines said they were mandating it. And every all the employees flipped out and said, no way. Wow. Well, turns out, like a week later, all the other airlines, American and Southwest and all these guys said, we are not mandating it. Because they saw the firestorm that happened. They saw the shit show. Um I guess I can, I can curse now. Yeah. And yeah. so they saw people like you and me take nonviolent direct action. And they said, we don't, 
we don't want to be hassled. Mm. So just like they're hassling people to get this job, we're going to hassle them to say, no, we're not. And there's power in numbers, and that's that's what we're trying to do. Let me ask you this. Uh, of them trying to push this, they are really trying to push it despite all the evidence that's out there. What do you? Why do you think they are continuing pushing this? What is really the motive here? What do you think the motive here? Oh, the motive is money. The motive is money. Pure and simple. I mean, you, you've got an injection that has no liability. So the more of them you sell, the more money you make, you never have to worry about a lawsuit coming back on you. Yeah. And the government is buying it. So literally, Uncle Sam is going to the Federal Reserve and printing billions of dollars and just giving it to you. And then you get to give your drug everywhere. So imagine if you had a product that it couldn't harm people and the government just wanted to buy as much of it as they could and just give it to people for free. It's the ultimate money-making scheme. It's like you can't lose. Why, so, why don't they do that for everything? Why don't they do it for cancer treatment? You know, you got to spend some serious ducats if you want to get some real <laughs> deal cancer treatment. But, you know, if, 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 if you want the vaccine – you know, they're oh for Winfrey with 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 all of it, you know, one for you, one for you and one for you, you know. But uh, uh, why do you why don't they do that with other medicines and drugs and things of that nature? Is there not money in the government uh, giving the pharmaceuticals money to distribute cancer treatment free? Um, you know, like insurance will pay for cancer for traditional cancer treatment for the cut, burn and poison. For the you know yeah. chemo radiation and surgery, but if you want to go you know drink green juice and take IV vitamin C in a naturopathic clinic, we have those in Arizona. You know, forget it. Insurance ain't paying it, right? And you're paying right. 17 bucks for a jar of juice this big, you know, which when you consider that, like it's actually not a bad deal. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's it's where money can be made, right? And okay, you know, there's maybe like. Half a million people that die of cancer every year. There's, you know, several million that are that are diagnosed with it every year. There's money to be made, but this is a drug that be given to everybody, everybody. Yeah. Like at least everybody over the age of 15 or yeah. 12 or whatever age they've said it's safe for now. So it's like you're hitting 60, 70, 80 percent of the population with this thing. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. No-brainer. You got that right. Yeah. yeah. That that makes sense because I mean, you you can't. Uh, mandate a cancer treatment for everyone, right? Because everyone doesn't have cancer. So you, you can't mandate, um, you know, a, a, a treatment for uh, kidney failure because everyone doesn't have kidney failure. So, so you're right when you think about that. Uh, again, just sitting there and saying this is a vaccine, you know, sales 101. I, I've been a sales professional for years. You know, I'm a life insurance agent. Um, and and been in sales for years. Sales 101 says create the problem, solve the problem, explain value, right? Those are those are three top sales techniques. Create the problem, solve the problem, explain value. And that's what they're doing out here. They're telling you that there's a problem and, you know, here's the solution and here's why this solution works and is good for you. Uh, but the common sense part of it is the part that really kills me because when you just, you look up, I had someone ask me the other day, um, you know, about, about my son back when I, I got COVID and, um, it was probably two weeks went by. I, I didn't know with a hundred percent certainty what I was dealing with. I might've assumed and, and thought that this was COVID, but I didn't know with a hundred percent certainty until, I spoke with my other coworkers who had been out and they went and got tested and they came back positive for COVID. And as we sat, talked and explained, um, you know, each to each other about symptoms and things of that nature, then it was like, okay, it was evident that what I had was COVID. You know, I went through um, some, you know, a little bit of breathing, tough breathing and all that good stuff, right? Um, you know, and, and, and I had my regimen that I went down um, from a, a common sense health and wellness perspective that, that helped me get through it. Right. But, you know, I took my son to the barbershop a couple weeks later and now I'm catching it on the back end as it's understood that I now know that I was positive 
for COVID. And, and I was asked, well, you know, why didn't you go get your son tested after that? And I said, because number one, I believe with 100 percent certainty in all the health and wellness, you know, things that I did. So. Number two, we took precaution just the same, even just driving him to the barbershop. I didn't I didn't hug my my 14 year old son. I, I, I we rolled the windows down. We wore masks in the car. And and I did it just because I knew that I had been sick a couple of weeks before um, and wasn't sure yet what it was. But, you know, took the but see, the division comes into play. Where, oh, well, you still should have gotten him, you know, tested. You know, you still should have gotten tested. You said, why would I get tested? I'm over it now. I don't I don't I don't need to worry about it. But but this is the thing. Everyone has this thought process that the test go get tested, get tested, get tested, get tested. Um, I don't even personally. I don't even want to get the test. That's that's just me. I, I don't even want to go anywhere near any of that stuff uh, because it just none of it makes sense. I mean, my dad right now, uh, you know, my stepmother is a is a doctor down in um, Aventura Hospital in, in South Florida. And, um, you know, my, my dad is uh, Miami Dade County Public Schools. Um, you know, advocate and uh, or IT personnel, you know, he, he's they've got to get letters. And according to the CDC, after I think it's 10 days after you are clear of symptoms or something like that, you can go back to work. But people are still showing up positive. People are still showing up positive even weeks later, two and three weeks later, they're still coming up positive. And uh, we all saw one of the celebrities, which has been taken down now, where they uh, test one nostril was negative and then the other nostril, they're positive. And, and some of that stuff is, is quite interesting to me. But the fact of the matter is that I'm not even I mean, do we even trust the test at all? Are the tests even of any real value? Well, you know, speaking of the test, it's very interesting. I just read some information, uh, I think it was Monday, about EO, EO, uh, ethylene oxide, which was put on the end. It's, it's the chemical that's on the end of the nasal, uh, and it's very toxic to the brain. Uh, and and, and yeah. they're talking about how these packages they take. If you read the package, it'll say that it has EO, and that's ethylene oxide. And which is a chemical that is made that is very toxic. If you Google it, you will see this chemical is very toxic. And if you look on the pack of the nasal swab, they saying it's got if it's got EO, you don't want that up your nose. So it's very interesting how, and it also lowers your immune system. It's very interesting how we're we're talking about health, but what we're also talking about is a way to lower your immune system. As one doctor put it about the first shot, what the first shot does is lowers your immune system. Well, no wonder you get sick. And then 15% lowers your immune system. Then when you take the second shot, it's, it's another 15%. Then you 35% lower. So guess what, how this society works here in America, that if your immune system is lower, you get sick more. You get sick more, you own some type, you own some type of pharmaceutical. And so because people are living, for them, people are living too long. And so they want to they want to slow the birth rate. This has always been about lowering the birth rates of people, no matter what means. And they're giving shots to people that may have other problems, like a an example, a person who has sickle cell that that may affect their blood. Uh, by the shot and then hearing about blood clots where people who got sickle cell are very afraid. People who already have immune uh, um, autoimmune disease are very afraid to take the shot because they're making the shot a blanket statement. It doesn't matter what other illnesses you, you carry, here, take the shot. And there ain't no other second opinion. There ain't no like right now, well, I want to get a second opinion from doctor. There is no second opinion. All the second opinion are thrown out the door and to where, and they look like they are crazy or they're, they're out of it. But we're not looking at a lot of these things here that what I kind of see is no doubt about money, because if your immune system is lower, guess what? You're going to the doctor more. You're going to be on some type of pharmaceutical medicine for the rest of your life just because your immune system is lower and you will die early if your immune system, if you don't build up your immune system because your, your immune system is your lifeblood. So they have found a way now to continue to mess with our immune system and stress hormones. It's also a lowers your immune system because once you kick in the stress hormones, you can't think about nothing other than stress of your health, right? So it's all kind of factors here to create this uh, lower your immune system so that you can continue to be ill and sick. Like like you said, Doc, hell, you know, I'm like you. 
I don't know when the last time I've been sick, except for when I had COVID two times and it was in June, right? <laughs> so, and so, you know, I mean, I understand how it works because, because if your immune system is lowered, if you're not eating the right vitamins, if you're not eating live foods and you're just eating a lot of dead foods, McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken, eating foods that are cooked in high grease, uh and, and it's causing all kinds of problems then yeah because it, because you don't hear if we're really talking about health we'd be shutting down mcdonald's we'd be shutting down kentucky fried chicken we'd be shutting down these fast foods that are killing the people really fast with diabetes right but and, and even even processed sugar we will be we'd be throwing out all the processed sugar in the stores right but we don't do that instead we we, we bring a child into this world and and, and so we shoot them with vaccines we, we're giving them all kind of vaccines from start and being before they were born on their dead because mama's eating sugar and if the mama's eating sugar the sugar's fed right into the baby so the baby's born addictive already right and we don't even know that we don't even see how far back this goes when it comes to eating sugar if you just black away sugar your immune system will spike up you know very strong just because you got away from sugar and so we're not understanding how this health works nobody's telling us the truth and most people are just living off television and this is one of the problems we've just talked about today, Joe. Uh, you know, specifically for our people, run around, want to get on crates and jump on crates and break their neck. Why is that? Why do we have fun looking at each other fall off a crate? You know, and, it's, and we'll laugh about it and joke about but, it. Why the state behind, behind the scenes, they're changing laws on our ass. They're making new laws and they're going to push your ass out the door with you even trying to advance your own personal life, even with a regular job. And, and, and that's that's indicative of our society in general. Um, you know, if you've ever seen any of those movies, there's, there's a new one. Uh, there's a new series on Netflix now, but it's about a guy that gets kidnapped. It's a guy from Entourage, um, but he gets kidnapped. And, and, and then the, the show is, I guess, about uh, trying to find him or whatever. But there's a part in the show where he has to hold up uh, a sign that says, if I get to five million views, I'm dead. So, but in, I've seen other shows and movies like that, and it's usually the person ends up getting killed because people want to see that negative thing happen. They want to jump on the social media and they want to see that, even though it says, hey, I get the five million views, I'm dead, you know, so the idea would be as a society, society okay, let's, let's cut that off. Let's not even look at it. But people can't help themselves. We've created a society where people want to see other people's failure. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, we we you can talk about how brutal football is or isn't. But, you know, now you got uh, the professional. Uh, 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 what, I don't know what you call it, but ultimate fighting sports and whatnot. You know, I mean, we went from, you know, wearing gloves and getting beat up. And, you know, people, black eyes and bloodied eyes and nose in boxing to now ultimate fighting. And I mean, you know, you you, you take any uh, lighter skinned person and next thing you know, they're all red by the time the end of the fight because they got blood everywhere. You know, and it's like, wow, um, the, 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 it's interesting how people are now. We want that. We want to see people fall. We want to see people get beat up. We want to see people get hurt. And it's a distraction. It's a complete distraction. I saw something recently. I'll, I'll tell you guys, this is very interesting. And I never thought about this, um, but I was looking at some uh, in insurance videos and whatnot. And the guy was telling a story about how a, a wealthy gentleman was having a conversation with him. And he said, you know, football, baseball, basketball are the poor man's sport. And he was like, well, what are you talking about? And he's like, it's the poor man's sport. He said, just look at the commercials. Soft drinks, coffee, um, fast foods, you know, all the worst of the worst stuff in society is on the commercials during those type of sports. But when you go and look at tennis and golf, what are the commercials there? You've got commercials focused on financial advisory, investing, life insurance, things of that nature. So they know who's watching what and they point their advertising directly to those people. And now we're brainwashed into believing that, hey, I need to cut the stem off the strawberry because that's the way it looks in the commercial on TV. When in actuality, if I wash that stem, it tastes like 
nothing. And if I eat it with the strawberry, it's going to taste like the strawberry. But I got more vitamin C in the stem of that strawberry than in the actual meat of the strawberry itself. Right. But we come home and cut the heaviest part off. Dr. Mayo of the Mayo Clinic said if our garbage disposal had a digestive tract, it would be the healthiest member of the family. You know, so when you think about the foods that we don't eat and, and how advertising plays a part, um, then, it, you know, the question is, how do we get away from that? As a society, how do we get away from, you know, all of this brainwashing um, that, uh, that, that's going on. You guys got any ideas? Uh, I mean, I think we just continue to, to spread the message. Um, I think that, uh, 2020, 2021 has been just a giant wake up call for people Yeah. that, um, you know, it's kind of like when you figure out that, you know, uh, and spoiler alert for any kids who are watching that your parents are Santa Claus and then you figure out that your parents are also the tooth fairy and all these other things. It's like if you kind of figure out that one one big lie is a lie, then you, th that's what happened to me. I'll, I'll say that. Like when I healed myself through diet and nutrition, it made me seriously reevaluate like all these other things in my life because I was like, wow, I didn't think I didn't think that was possible, right? And so when when the lie just keeps getting more and more absurd to try to get people to believe it. And they have to censor more and shove it down your throat and force it and all this stuff. Um, like people start asking questions of like, why are they pushing for this thing so hard? Mm. And then when they, then they realize like the vaccine thing is a farce. Then they kind of realize like maybe the whole medical system is a farce. Um, so, so we just have to keep spreading that message that like, look, Joe Biden's never going to come on TV and say, get a Vitamix, get some fruits and vegetables. By right. the way, I'm paying for it. Get healthy now, guys. It's not going to happen. It's going to be yeah. dudes like Joe and John doing this show every week and getting the information out there, and it's going to be a bottoms-up thing. It's No great yeah. movement of change has ever come top-down. It's bottom-up. Right. So that's, that's why they keep trying to suppress us. Mm. So we just got to keep speaking up, and it's going to happen slowly, but eventually you hit what's called a tipping point. Yeah. And enough people just say, this is ridiculous. I'm not participating. I'm not complying. Um, you know, they said that if 16% of consumers bought organic and refused to buy GMO, GMO would go out of business. That's right. Wow. Not 100%, not 50%, not a quarter, 16%. Wow. So we don't, need, we don't need everybody to do it. We just need enough to hit a tipping point. That's the name of your show, yes. right? <laughs> yes, <Man. that's> right. <laughs> Thank you for making that plug. <laughs> I just know. realized it as I'm saying it. So um, <laughs> I think the solution is to continue to, to get the word out there and um, and grow it grassroots bottoms up. And I think we'll do it. Like I see progress. I do too. I, I went to go get a haircut the other day, okay? And um, I've been seeing the same girl for a haircut for since before COVID. And we're friends. And she was like, in the beginning, she was all about like, you got to wear a mask to my thing. And I'm just like, okay, fine. Like, I'll, well, I'll get you a haircut. I'll wear it. And I continued to, you know, speak my truth on social media. And she followed me. And one day she came – and one day she was getting my haircut. And she's like, you know, Ben, I think this whole like ma – I think it's just a political ploy. Like, what do you think? And I'm like, you know my stance, you know? And yeah. – um. And so then the next time I see her, she's on the same page with me. And she's like, you know, I see all my posts from 2020 a year ago when I was buying into everything the media was saying. Because, you know, it shows you like one year ago you posted blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I'm disgusted with myself. I can't believe I fell for all that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Like I can't yeah. believe, you know. Um, and so it was because of people like me speaking the truth. It took her a little while to come around. But she's smart. She's not stupid. She just needed to, you know, not get, you know, um, she, like she needed, she needed a direction to be pointed to go find the other side of information yeah. to look at. And, and then and, and at, it sounds like she, she came to a decision herself, yeah, you know, she did both um, opinions and, and, and like used common sense and said, you know what, what Ben's saying makes more sense to me. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you got a question here, Doc. Uh, let's see, shout out to Phyllis Myers. Uh, they say, she's asking, does the doctor treat specific microbiome issues? Um, I don't treat any issues. I, what I do is I help people create health. Um, so I'm just working on basically boosting people's level of health and boosting people's level of immunity and chronic health issues tend to resolve. So when you say there's a microbiome specific issue, I don't know what the issue is. Uh, but you can shoot me a message, kind of tell me about what's going on and uh, like find me on social media, on my website, whatever, and shoot me a message, tell me about what's going on. And I'll try to, you know, if I can help you, I'll let you know. If I can't, I'll get you the right person. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, real quick, um, you know, you brought up something and, you know, because we're, we're not going to go too long here, but but you brought up something that I thought was interesting. You talked about Biden. Um, is anybody, am I the only one that's, that's still not feeling real secure as to whether or not he's going to do these full four years? Cause I, I'm, I'm seeing, listen, in life insurance, I deal a lot in final expense. Okay. I deal a lot in final expense. I have become an expert at spotting out Alzheimer's disease. <laughs> and, um, that's what I see when i listen to any reports a lot of or a lot of different reports of biden and i and i saw it you know before he got elected and and i said dude this guy his cognition is way off he, he, you know he, he i i think either a they purposely they know this and they're looking to showcase the first female president um but i don't think that he's right in the mind. How do you guys feel? I agree. Yeah. <laughs> because I mean, I'm looking at it and, and I'm feeling like we're dealing with there was some, and, and, you know, people say a lot, well, you know, the president has all this power and this, that, and the other, but I, I don't think that we would have a, he can't have too much power. This has to be a conglomerate of his of his whole constituency or, or, or his whole team, because there's no way that this guy um, is 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 doing anything, making any real decisions. Um, you know, that's a team of people there that that is making the decisions for him. Um, but, you know, with that being said, any last uh, thoughts, words, questions? that uh, any of you guys have, John, Dr. Uh, ben. No, I pretty much covered everything. Anybody else who was listening, got a question they wanna pop up while, the, while we have the doc online, that'd be great. But about Biden, uh, you know, of course, um, I, I, I felt all that was uh, a joke, even getting him elected or how they did it uh, and, 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 and people's fear basically this is this is how you rule people so they made people believe made a lot of people believe that trump is a, a racist and everything else to move people's emotions and didn't even care what biden was pushing they just didn't care they didn't care biden's history either <laughs> you know so it's the fear thing man and that and what that scares me more than anything but what i am glad is what uh, uh dr ben just mentioned is that there, it is changing and it depends on what vibration you are at, you will see the change. Some people is at the lower vibration, they don't see the change. They're constantly bringing in more fear. But for myself, as I travel, uh, even when I'm in Cincinnati and I'm doing my business, uh, my business is in, you know, I, I deliver products to different stores from the hood to out to the affluent neighborhoods. And I'm seeing a change. I'm seeing people like, they're not that serious. They're, they're not taking this no more. It's almost like they're tired, right? And so it's, it's very good. Even in a, a restaurant I go to up in Cincinnati called the Juicery. Uh, it's a vegan restaurant. They have the great, some of the best juice in Cincinnati that well, I can snatch up and, 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 and go with. You know, and when they first started out last year, they was, you know, you had to stand outside and wear a mask to come in. You couldn't eat inside. Now they just relax. They just took, took the thing away and you can just come in and eat drink your juice and even with this new variant that popped up everybody's like i'm tired come, come on in let me serve you you know ain't nobody tripping so that inspires me that gives me hope that i'm seeing people resist 
because that's the thing. I think if more of us resist, we will vibrate more closer to each other, uh, just like I'm seeing on, on Clubhouse. And I tell people all the time, it doesn't matter what color you are. Well, you got to understand something about this health. You got to understand about how you can vibrate a better life and how you can improve your life and bring in whatever you want in life. It's not about the color. It's about whatever the universe is giving you and what you are giving to the universe. And so a lot of people are stuck under this lack uh, lack movement. I can't pay my bills. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, where are my kids going to go to school? Oh, I'm going to lose my job. And there are some people that's in abundance where life is abundance. People are getting the life they want. They are able to pay their bills. They are able to create other income, other streams of income. Joe, you and I talk about it all the time where new millionaires was made last year. You know how much money my business sold three times last year and how I'm into increasing my business today. And I don't see the fear. I'm sorry. I just don't see it. I'm seeing people are really changing. And that's maybe that. And I talked about this last night, maybe because of what I feel, because I do believe that that uh, you vibrate in your space, whatever you're thinking. I think human consciousness does that. And I think because I don't have fear, I don't watch television, that I'm actually seeing what I'm thinking. So I'm seeing people, and, and, and it's, it's interesting. So maybe, okay, I'm going to go to Whole Foods. Is this, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Okay, I'm going to go to Whole Foods. So I'm going to go to Whole Foods. Is it that I'm vibrating that everybody else who believes like I believe is going to Whole Foods at the same time? And I'll go so we all see each other, and you know we ain't. And then the person who does believe in the COVID, he's going to go to Whole Foods the next hour, and all he sees people with masks on. So I don't know, but I know that what I'm seeing in my dimension is less fear. It's giving me hope. And, 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 it, and it is a vibrating, a higher level of thinking, of confidence. So I could care less what the government is doing. As long as the people are woke and we can resist and be able to stand up against it, that's, that's what I look forward to. Exactly. I guess if, if it ever gets to where that's not the case, then that's when we got the real problem. Right. Absolutely. Um, any last words? I uh, did have one question out there. Uh, did the doctor say he helps people with medical exemptions? You didn't. You didn't. I don't. Did I hear you? You didn't say that, did you? No, I don't. I don't. You got to uh, see a medical doctor in your state for one. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Now there are forms you can go and download. I, I have a. I have a website. You can go and get a medical exemption form. I don't know what that means today with this COVID thing. I know that when I raised my daughter. Uh, we didn't do vaccines in public school and there was an exempt form. You can get a religious person to sign and say, hey, I ain't with that shit. Right. And so I don't know about now how this working now, whether it's the same thing, because if it would be the case, people will be using it with their job saying, hey, I'm not. Here's my exempt form. I'm not taking it. But it's somehow they're pushing this for so much that, um, you know, it's almost like do the form really matters at this point of what they're doing now. I tell everyone. If you are fearing, and I know, I think, I think, I think, brother here is really pushing the point about what's going on with the public schools. I remember mean, he was talking the other day about that, and so we encourage to you need to homeschool your kid anyway. You need to get your kids out of public school, period, and you won't have to worry about them programming your child with some crap. And then you you got to come, you, your child's got to come home. Then you got to re-educate your child on some things that you do not agree with what they're doing in school. And specifically trying to pass law to where a certain age, they can get the vaccine without your permission. I mean, think about that. So I, I would encourage anyone, hey, stand up, pull the kid. It's not hard to homeschool. Homeschooling is all damn day. I'm, my granddaughter be with me. She come over to the warehouse. She's counting and learning and reading. It's schools all day. When, when I'm, I want, sometimes she come over. She's helping me cook. She makes sea moss, right? So school is all day. Quit acting like school's got to be six hours. You know, take time out and just read with your kid. Educate your kid. Do some math with them, and that's just school. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, before we go real quick, Doc, I, I'd love to give you a chance to kind of speak to some, um, you know, maybe some positive, uh, give us some positive uh, uh, things that, that you've seen happen in your practice, um, you know, your chiropractic uh, world, um, you know, or, or, uh, or in, in this medical fight. Just, you know, give us some, you know, let us let us go out here with some some positive uh, something that uh, you can tell us about. Uh, sure. I, I think, you know, when, when we stand up and there's enough of us, um, we win. 
um, we've seen with the local naturopathic school um, that they told all their students like, hey, you got to declare your vaccination status by the, the end of this week. And if you don't, you don't get to go to class. Well, a few hundred of them didn't comply and just said, no, we're not doing it. We're showing up to class anyway. And the school backpedaled and they said, well, just in a little more time, you got you to gotta tell us. You got to tell it, right? And so they just stood up and said no. And the school's like trying to pretend to enforce stuff. But they got enough. They got enough of the students there that are not complying that they can't kick them all out. And so they're kind of backpedaling on these mandates they've been trying to push on the students just by peaceful non-compliance of them saying like, "No, I'm not going to do it," and you're, and you're not going to like kick me out of school. And you know, doing things like um, you know, if they're they're like barred from entry because their badge won't get them in the building, other students are letting them into class. Um, mm -hmm. So, so it just it it they're just bullies. And you just got to stand up to them. The power that they have is is, is um, ill begotten and, and essentially an illusion, you know. If enough of us stand up, so that's what we got to keep doing. Um, don't believe the hype. Don't believe the fear. Take control of your health. That's the ultimate freedom. Yeah. If you have control of your health, you're never going to need a pharmaceutical drug. You're never going to need government health care. Um, you know, unless you get your arm ripped off or something, then you got to right. go to the hospital and get it sewn back on. But for the most part, like you're not going to get diabetes, cancer, heart disease, all these things that kill most people. So you're, you're going to declare your independence just with your health. Um, mm. And so that that is the most powerful form of freedom that we have is our health. And that's why they're trying so hard to take it away. But the good news is it's in your hands. You just got to do the work. There's no, no doctor. I'm not coming to save you. No other doctor's coming to save you. You got to put it in, but it's doable. It's enjoyable. And, and, you know, there's no, you know, drugs have a high and a low. There's no low from health. You just keep going up. Okay? Yeah. And, and, and so freedom's a side effect of that. All the side effects are good things. So, so yeah, just continue to take care of your health. That's your passport to freedom. I'll, I'll leave with that. Great. Here we go. All right. Well, good stuff there. Uh, once again, thanks, Dr. Ben, for uh, coming on the show. And, um, you know, you have an open invitation uh, and, and we'll, we'll showing this and, and sharing it all week. And uh, it's amazing how um, when we do shows like this, um, how many people tune in on the uh, 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 on the share. So, uh, you know, I'll send you the links as well. And, you know, it'd be great if you get a chance to share it yourself um, on your platform so people can, you know, hear this stuff and, and hear um, some truth as, uh, as it's being told here. So we appreciate you. Um, once Definitely. again, thanks for coming on to the Tipping Point Morning Show. John, thank you, brother. We appreciate you. Dr. Ben, see you. And folks, we'll see you next week. Appreciate you, Doc. Thanks for coming. Thank you, guys. All right. All right.